Hello and welcome to SPH3U Vectors. Before you begin today, please make sure that you have your Vectors Notes template ready uh, to jot down various uh, in information points as you go. Um, we'll be collecting these tomorrow at class. Okay, so our learning goals. Today we're going to talk about how to distinguish between scalar and vectors provide some examples of vector quantities relating to one-dimensional motion. When we're finished, we should have the tools we need to solve some problems related to distance, position, displacement, velocity, um, using vector diagrams. And we should also understand the conventions for, using, for representing vectors in algebra. All right, so a uh, quick question. A vector quantity has both magnitude and what? answer is it has a direction so it is some value applied through a direction and the convention for this is pretty simple we give a magnitude with units and then in square brackets we talk about the direction that it's applied some examples of vectors uh, the things that we've already covered in a scalar fashion displacement and velocity but there are others of course uh, you can probably think of some of those yourself. Acceleration, force, lots of other quantities have um, a direction applied to them. Now, when I come to talk about vector quantities this way, um, it's interesting to make the distinction between um, what we've done and what we've achieved. And it reminds me, uh, a buddy of mine talks about working in sales in Microsoft and his boss telling him, I'm not interested in how hard you worked. I'm not interested in what you did. Talk to me about what you've accomplished. Talk to me about results. And these quantities have a lot in common with that. So if we want to talk about displacement, it's not simply the distance we travel plus a direction. It's um, simpler than that in many ways. Okay, so here's a classic example. The commuter followed the yellow path um, going home from Manhattan, moved along the uh, river for 8.2 kilometers till he got to the bridge, took the bridge across 1.8 kilometers, and then drove back along the river to get to his home, 4.5 kilometers. When he's finished, he's driven 14.5 kilometers. But his displacement is just 2.7 kilometers north. So there's lots of lots of um, distance traveled, but a, a really a pretty short displacement. The result was relatively small, and this is the important distinction. So if we take a one-dimensional case rather than a two-dimensional case, we can take Salmo walking two meters east and then one meter west. And we can talk about her distance traveled, we can think of that as the effort, versus her displacement, the result. And if we put it in those terms, it should be pretty simple for you to, to work out. Um, her distance traveled, she went two meters east and one meter west, two plus one equals three, very simple. The displacement requires a little more interpretation than that. And so let's do this in terms of a little scale diagram, which is always useful. She went two meters east, one meter west. The net result is one meter east. So she's one meter east of her original starting position. <clears throat> so this vector, because of course her one meter east is a vector quantity, this vector resulting from this addition of two vectors is called a resultant vector. Now we could have done this algebra algebraically as well, right? So we could have said um, two meters east plus one meter west. We can call east positive, so two meters positive, um, one meter west is negative. Add them together and get one meter positive or one meter east. And that leads us to uh, an interesting convention, right? 
when we go to work with vectors in an algebraic fashion, we have to decide what direction we're going to treat as positive. Really, from a mathematical point of view, you can choose any direction you want as positive. And there may be some instances where it's useful to do so. But the convention is that forward is taken as positive usually, as well as right. Up is taken as positive. North and east are taken as positive. So that's the general convention. If you want to work in any other way, you probably want to carefully define it. And it needs to be for a reason. Okay, so there's displacement in a nutshell. Very similar thing. Velocity isn't simply speed plus a direction. We're, 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 uh, we're looking at this. Our average velocity is our um, displacement divided by our delta t. Displacement over time. And so we can go back to Selma, right? And we can say, okay, she walked east two meters. She walked west one meter in three seconds. What was her average speed and what was her average velocity? So when we're thinking speed, again, we're thinking the history matters. When we're thinking velocity, we're thinking only about the results. So you can probably work this out pretty easily yourself. Her average speed, assuming that um, when since she traveled 3 meters in 3 seconds, her average speed is 3 over 3, or 1 meter per second. Ah, and here's where it gets interesting. Her average velocity is very different. So her, her displacement is just 1 meter east. And that took her 3 seconds to get there. So 1 over 3, 0 0.3 meters per second east is her average velocity, even though she was never going that slow. OK, so um, this gets us to a different definition. Instantaneous velocity versus average, the instantaneous velocity um, may never be the same as the average velocity. And we can go back through and we can look at Selma walking at constant speed and look at her instantaneous velocity. Remember she walked for two seconds, she walked uh, east. So at one second, her speed was one meter per second east. At two seconds, well, there's an interesting case. At two seconds, she was she was actually changing directions, so we can argue at precisely two seconds, her speed was zero meters per second. And then for the last second, she was traveling west at one meter per second. So the instantaneous velocity can very, be very different from the average velocity. Okay, so that's a very quick introduction to, um, to displacement and velocity. We're going to uh, work through the problems in the textbook tomorrow in class. Um, I'd ask you to bring your notes template with you. And uh, we'll collect it there. And we'll sit and, and work through those problems in class together. Thank you.